It's all nice and clean, like brand new. And so let's continue the assembly process. Either fellows, I suggest we settle an age-old argument. Some folks insist that cylinder walls need to be honed, while others maintain that a mirror surface is preferable. We do have an engine that requires a bit of work, but let's make it so half of the cylinders are honed while the others have a mirror finish, to see which would be the better option. Okay, let's do this. Honed or mirror finish for cylinder walls, which is better? Translation and voiceover by BMI Russian. Check this out, guys, we just had this block board out, and the guys even signed the cylinders for us. One and three are standard bore size for an 82mm piston, though the cylinders are ever so slightly wider, as the pistons are gonna need a bit of wiggle room. Clearance is 0.05, while cylinders 2 and 4, we've got the markings, and they indicate 0.02 mil. They have honed these out slightly, but the reason for that is, uh, while well, achieving a mirror finish while using a cutter is a really difficult task. It's really difficult to pull off. Anyway, so they did hone these two, but the cylinder bore is slightly narrow. We're gonna polish everything out to make it all smooth, and in the end the diameter should be about the same all across the board. Everything should be the exact size we need it to be. It's all fairly straightforward. Now it's all a matter of figuring out how to evenly polish them out. Well, let's get to it. Okay, let's stick this gauge into the polished cylinder. And what do we got? Zero point zero zero five, eh? So it's that bit too narrow. It's pretty much where we need it to be. Because while well, with this being a manual job, it wasn't easy. Yeah, I'd say we're good. The bore is about where we want it to be. It's about the same in all four cylinders. The difference being that two are honed, while the other two have got a mirror finish to them. We have prepared a block, now let's put together an engine, get it to start, and decide where to go from there. Okay, let's carry on. Here's the situation, guys. We've got the board out block, a new set of pistons. It's all nice and clean. As for the cylinder head, well, we've done a valve job, everything fits. That's all good and well. And now it's just a matter of inspecting everything prior to installation. We are going to be installing new spark plugs in order for, well... After the engine runs for a bit, we want to have a look at how much carbon gets deposited on them. I do expect the cylinders with different wall finish to operate and behave differently. Whether that's actually the case or not, um, we need to be able to see that somehow. Right now all of the parts are nice and clean. Yeah, now it's time to commence final assembly. All right, the engine is fully assembled, we filled it with all of the fluids, and now let's try starting it. Yo, you ready? All right now! So it has yet to warm up, but the key thing here is that we got it run. 
And that is a good start. Problem is the engine is shaking and quite noticeably. If I had to guess, uh, we'll figure it out. Okay, uh, swoosh it off. I'm quite glad that it started. Not that it could have gone any other way. But we're gonna do a bit of fine-tuning. Perhaps the ignition leads are in subpar condition? Anyway, fine-tuning and check the compression. Okay, we're looking pretty good here. I've got my compression tester. And let's check on the compression, shall we? With this being a freshly assembled engine, there might be some discrepancy. But we're about to find out. Let it rip. That's enough. And that would be a solid 8. Number 2. Enough, no need to turn it for that long. This one is at 8.5. Enough. And here we got to 9.5. Hit it. Easy, dude. Oh, holy cow, that's 10. Wow, 10 kilos in cylinder number 4. Now at this point, it's hard to tell which cylinder wall finish makes for healthier operation, honed or smooth. Here's what I suggest we do. We fire it up, allow it to run, and uh, go for a drive after that. Now, in order to give it a proper break-in and work out which finish is better, we've brought the car to a racetrack. First of all, we can cover a lot of distance here. Second, the engine is going to be given a proper thrashing. It is going to be subject to quite a bit of stress. We'll put it through its paces, and after that we'll see which cylinder is going to operate better. Okay, let's get out there. Now we want to do some driving on public roads. We'll hit the highway, do a lap around the city, and uh, head back to base through the city. And we're back at home base. We've actually been at this for a few days, I mean, one day isn't nearly enough. We are currently at 703 kilometers. The clock was on 2.30 when we started. And that brings us to a total of 473 Ks, which is quite a lot, I reckon. I got my compression tester, and I suggest we kick this process off by administering a compression test. And compare the figures to what we saw previously right after assembly. That'll do. How much would that be in cylinder number one? Let's call it 9.7. Enough. As for cylinder number two, that is a good nine kilos. Nine point three or thereabouts. Yeah, sounds about right. That's enough, stop. And in cylinder four, it's a good ten point nine. So that does it for the compression test. The compression has increased in three of the cylinders while staying about the same in one of them. It's actually a bit less than before. But I want to remove the cylinder head and have a look at the combustion chambers. Check the condition of the valves as well as the pistons. Let's uh, do just that. Okay, check this out. It's hard to make any definitive conclusions based on 500 kilometers of driving. Obviously, in certain spots, the pistons are slightly cleaner. Specifically, next to the valves, where you've got a lot of flow occurring. So, cylinder 2 has got a mirror finish, it is completely filthy. Cylinder 4 we also polished. And you will notice a small spot where there was a bit of ventilation. But that's nothing of consequence. As for the cylinder head, yeah, I see some evidence of coolant contamination. 
some deposits here and there. That said, we can't say with any certainty um, whether any of the cylinders was working worse than the others. It's all about the same. No matter if the cylinder was honed or polished to get a mirror finish. That tells us that 500 kilometers simply wasn't enough. So let's throw it all back together and keep right on driving. Okay, the engine is assembled, it runs, that's all good and well. Let's remember the number, 703. And you had better get that number to 13,300. At the very least, 500 is the bare minimum. Yeah, at least another 500. On top of the 500, it's already done. Here you go. This is for gas. And don't you come back until you see 13.3 on the clock. Go on now. We're gonna be at it for like three days, uh, right, Sergey? Nah, 500 kilometers, that'll take, um, wanna maybe drive to Kemerovo? To your house? Yeah, to my place to have some lunch. Hold the gas gun, dude. Okay, let's see how far he was able to travel. 13,260, which brings us to a total of 1,030 kilometers. Okay, since Sergei is back, let's bring the car inside for inspection. I didn't check the plugs initially. This is number one, right? Yep. Okay, check this out. Number one plug is pretty dark. Number two is not as dark. You know what? Nah, it's about the same. Number three is definitely not as dark. Same goes for number four. That's odd. Let's check the compression. That'll do enough. 10.1. Nine and a half. enough. Number 3 is close to 9.5, but it's more like 9.4. That's enough. Oh, wow. 10.9. Right, so the results are rather curious. Number 1 is at around 10, 9.5 and 2, 9.5 and 3. As for number 4, it's almost at 11. That is way outside the acceptable sort of range. You can't have the compression differ by any more than one kilo, I think it is. But then the cylinder walls do have a different finish to them. But let's remove the cylinder head and see what the combustion chambers look like. Which one of them is darker than the others, and what the situation is inside the cylinders overall. Okay, remove the head and uh, take a look. So look here, guys, the pistons, well... There seems to be absolutely no difference judging by the pistons. Two of them are dark, the other two aren't quite as, and for whatever reason they're dark in 1 and 2 and cleaner in 3 and 4. I'd say no definitive conclusions can be made as to whether honing or mirror finish is the way to go. As for the cylinder head, well, that's a different story. Take a look at the valves. As we all know, valves, particularly on the exhaust side, they can get really hot, to the point where any deposits are going to burn right off. 2 and 4, the valves are clean. 3 and 4, they're quite dirty. The deposits form as a result of oil getting burned, obviously. Okay, well, I'm not gonna go on a rant here. Feel free to make your own conclusions. Let us know what you think, and that's it. Sub, hit the bell. Catch you guys later.